folks, Scott here with my 10 cards of one kit video and more featuring the Love From Lizzie October 2020 card kit. This is the Happiness is Homemade card kit. As usual, I do take the five card stocks in our kit and cut them down to use them as my card bases. Let's dig right in. My first card on a red card base is spread some love with a little honey and bread <laughs> you know me i love illustrating a sentiment <laughs> this is pattern paper die cut with a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die surprise surprise that's matted on a thin white mat and glued to my red card base this is a thin strip of that picnic tablecloth pattern paper glued down lined with a couple of our strawberry glitter peel-offs these both are ephemera pieces attached to this cardstock with some foam tape this is glued down to the cardstock this is a sticker from our set the honey i thought all three of these went very well together i took our little teapot die and i cut the hearts out of that teapot die from a scrap of a white glitter cardstock now i didn't have any yellow glitter that actually matched my honey so i just used an alcohol marker and to color up my white glitter cardstock i always save my white glitter scraps no matter how small because you can color those and turn them into most any color at all spread some love i really like this card quite a lot you know i like my red now we had a lot of recipe card pattern papers in our kit so i thought i'd try and see if i could use those recipe cards not just as recipe cards but as a background for some of our cards so this is on the sunshine yellow card base and we have our happiness is homemade card with that background of a recipe card now i did have to add some matching pattern paper to the bottom of this recipe card because it only had it going across the top you can tell this is a little different scale, but I think it still matches well and works well with this recipe card background. I cut those down to four inches by five and a half inches, added a thin black mat, and glued that down to my sunshine yellow card base. I stamped the Happiness is Homemade using VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, and I did emboss that with some clear embossing powder for a little shine. These are all ephemera pieces attached to the card. The flour is glued down. The sugar, the recipe box, and the bowl are attached with foam tape. I took one of those extra little golden yellow glitter hearts and attached that under our sentiment there. Happiness is homemade. There you go. You can use those recipe cards for backgrounds as well. So for our third card, there is one pattern paper in our pack that I loved. I think more than any, this is on our gray card stock and we've got people who love to eat are always the best people that's that great quote from Julia Child I love that and this is that great black and white animal and vegetable <laughs> pattern paper from our kit I just loved that pattern paper I die cut that again with a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die added that to a thin dark red mat and glued that down to my gray card base I cut a rectangle of this red pattern paper and used my hole punch to make little notches in its corner and then matted that on a white piece of cardstock glued that to my card front I mounted up this ephemera sentiment using some foam tape and then added these two stickers the beets and the carrots I destickified those added some foam tape to the back of those and added them to my card front people who love to eat are always the best people this would make a great thank you card for your Thanksgiving dinner hosts <laughs> anybody who serves you a lovely dinner and you want to give them some some thanks people who love to eat are always the best people thank you Julia child I love this black white and red card okay I think we all know that bake in particular is an easy word to pun so here we go we're gonna do some bake puns here this is on our soft pink card base and we've got a bake someone happy <laughs> I really like this this is one of our little two inch square cut aparts I just cut that out of our sheet added that to a thin white mat I die cut this pattern paper again with my lawn fawn stitched rectangle die added a thin white mat behind that glued those down to my pink cardstock and then these are both pieces of ephemera I glued them together added them to the top of this card with some foam tape added a few sequins 
sequins from our sequin mix. Yes, those are pink sequins. <laughs> Bake someone happy. <laughs> I like this quite a lot. A mixer and bowls. What else are you going to do but bake? Okay, more baking coming at you. We are on the pale blue card base, and we have Bake the World a Better Place. That's another sentiment from our stamp set. Bake the World a Better Place. I die cut this piece of pattern paper with a lawn from stitched rectangle die and matted that to a dark gray mat and glued those down to my soft blue card base. This is actually the oven from the large side of our pattern paper. I simply cut off the top of the oven so I could use it on this card. Fussy cutting, it was pretty easy except for that damn handle on that teapot. That was a little over fussy as far as I am concerned. But bake the world a better place. What It looks like this handle here you can grab and open up and we've got a little globe inside our oven. Again, I like illustrating my sentiments whenever I can. I just cut this oven handle from a piece of dark gray cardstock. This is another piece of pattern paper glued to the top of that and down to the printed towel here. So it still looks the same. Our oven is all attached with some foam tape and the back of our oven door is covered with gray, as well as the back of the oven. This is an old globe image I have in my image files. I printed that up and cut that out, put that inside my oven with some foam tape. Bake the world a better place. I added some sequins and even some sequins on the teapot right there. I don't know if this is some kind of a metaphor for global warming or if it's... A really bad pun. <laughs> I just thought it was a cute image to use with this oven. Our little interactive card here, Bake the World a Better Place. Hey, I'm using such large pieces of pattern papers on my cards here. I'm starting to worry that I'm going to run out of pattern paper. On our sunshine card base again, we've got you bake me hot <laughs> using another recipe card for my background now this time i went in and pretended like i was grandma fortner baking a cherry pie lifted some ingredients on the side over here i then took some frayed burlap distress oxide ink and ink blended up all of the edges i wanted this to look nice and old and aged i printed this sentiment directly on this pattern paper using my silhouette software and the smoothie shop font. I th thought that worked really good for this card. You bake me hot. I thought the oven mitt said hot. Of course, a pie always says baked. I actually cut this pie out of one of the cut apart sheets. It was actually the largest pie in our kit. So I fussy cut that pie out. I attached it to a scrap of white cardstock and then fussy cut a little white border around our pie so it would match our oven mitt here, which is an ephemera piece. I added some uh, Spectrum Noir sparkle pen to my heart and then a little Nouveau Drops morning dew crystal drops on top of that for a little shine and a little dimension on our pie heart there. A few more sequins adds a touch more sparkle. You bake me hot. <laughs> now one of the tags on our tag cut apart sheet, I really liked the sentiment, but it was pink. So I kind of avoided it for a while. But in time, the sentiment grew on me. I had another soft pink card base. So here we go. You're flipping awesome. <laughs> this is a great Valentine card, a great appreciation card, a great thank you card for whatever. I fussy cut our tag away from the our tag cut apart sheet and I glued that down to a piece of black tie glitter cardstock and then cut a little mat for that around there. I added some of the charcoal ribbon in the top after punching a hole through that label there. Now my background here, again, I'm worried about running out of pattern paper. I actually used the Love from Lizzie Candy Stripe background stamp. This was from September of last year, September of 2019. I used that background stamp to stamp my card base. I used some worn lipstick distress oxide ink, stamped that right on my card base. 
That gave me some nice stripes. A great background. I glued this tag directly down to the card front. I then took one of our wood veneer die cut tags and I colored that up with some frayed burlap and some walnut stain, Distress Oxide ink, colored that all up, added a piece of our charcoal ribbon to the top of that, and then I die cut another piece of that black tie glitter paper with our medium-sized heart die, glued that to the middle of our little cutting board here, added some red sequins for a pop of color and a little bit of shine. You're flippin' awesome. A great, very useful card. For any friend or your favorite pancake aficionado. <laughs> I have a lot of friends that have birthdays this time of year, so I think my mind constantly goes to birthdays anyway. This is again on a gray card base, and we have Life is Short, Eat Dessert First. <laughs> Definitely a birthday card for those of a certain age. <laughs> Pretty simple card here. Again, I took that picnic tablecloth pattern paper, cut a strip of that, glued that down to the center of my gray card base. I then lined the, both edges with all three sizes of our strawberry glitter peel-offs. Those look great. I really love that red color peel-off. Lots of glitter on that. And then these are two pieces of our red satin ribbon that are glued down to the sides as well. Both ephemera pieces here. Life is short. Eat dessert first. Mounted up with some foam tape. I took my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen to my cake here. Gave it a little glitter and then attached that to the card front using foam tape. Really pretty. That red and gray works well together. Life is short. Eat dessert first. <laughs> there was one more stamp in our stamp set that I was really interested in using. So for our next card, this is on the pale blue card base and we have cooking is love made visible with yet another stove again I'm trying to spread out my background pieces I took one of the white card stocks that were in our ephemera pack and I stamped this stamp on it this is a cartabella this is a designer diamond a2 background stamp use this very little but I thought it would work very good in a kitchen setting so I stamped that on that love from Lizzie super smooth cardstock I used frayed burlap for that and then I masked off the bottom and used my walnut stain distress oxide ink to ink in the bottom floor here. I cut a thin strip of medium brown cardstock from my stash to stand in as our little floorboard here. I then met die cut that whole piece with a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die matted that to a darker brown mat and glued those down to my pale blue card base i stamped this sentiment using walnut stain distress oxide ink and i embossed that with some clear embossing powder. I then die cut that out using some partial die cutting with a smaller Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die. And then I colored the edges of that to make it look more like a frame. I just used my colored pencils on that. This oven is one of our ephemera pieces. This heart is an ephemera piece. Both of those are attached to this card front using foam tape. And then I took our smallest little heart die that we got in our die pack and and die cut three more little hearts from that white glitter cardstock and glued those as if they were the steam coming out of our teapot. I don't think you can make cooking more visible than steam coming out of a <laughs> coffee pot. Cooking is love made visible. I really like this. I really like that old-fashioned stove ephemera piece. I'm glad there were a few of those in our kit. And then there was this one sticker I was dying to use. This is on our last red card base. And we have Live a Little, Lick the Bowl, Happy Birthday, another birthday card. If you can't lick the bowl on your birthday, then when can you lick the bowl? I dug out this old LDRS. This is Fancy Rectangles and Layers die. I thought this would work really well and actually has kind of a homey feel to it. I die cut another piece of that Love from Lizzie cardstock with that smaller one and printed our sentiment on that. This is actually 
away the Lobster 1.4 font. I'll have links to these fonts on my website over at cardcutups.com. Originally, I was just going to do Live a Little and then use a Lizzie die for the Happy Birthday, but I decided that both of those needed to match, and the type on that actually matches the type on our little sticker quite well. Little, little, lick of the ball, happy birthday. I die cut one of our pattern papers with the larger one of those dies, and I also die cut a scrap of black cardstock to be a little drop shadow behind that. I glued our three pieces together and then down to our red card base. I de-stickified my three stickers from our sticker sheet and added them to the center of this card using foam tape. And then for a final touch, I used some of the mini hearts that we got in our add-on assorted peel-off pack from last month's kit. I'm really loving the red that Lizzie has been giving us lately. Live a little, lick the bowl, happy birthday. <laughs> That's my 10 cards, but we do have more. <laughs> now, this is my first idea when I saw the chipboard and the recipe cards and the extra Love from Lizzie cardstock. So I immediately thought of a art journal. So this is our little art journal that we have for this month. This actually opens up and has watercolor paper inside. We've got two panels, we've got two panels, we've got two panels, and these actually open up to make a full accordion style art journal. <laughs> I really like this. This is some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper. I happen to have a great big pad of that, and that's what I used. Here's a quick little how-to of how I created this little art journal. So we have these chipboard pieces in our kit. Lizzie was thinking we could use those to make recipe books. I thought I would share with you how to cover a piece of chipboard with pattern paper. Now, I was going to use this pattern paper from our kit, but I need an extra inch than this. This is four by six. I need five by seven to wrap around the edges of my cardstock. And I cut a hole in this right there. So I can't use this. I'm using a different piece of pattern paper from my stash. This is a five by seven piece of cardstock, an inch larger all the way around. To get started, we want to wet our cardstock, wet it from the front. Get it nice and wet. You don't want it sopping, but you do want it to soak up a little water. I think that helps the glue suck into the paper fibers really well. If your paper starts to curl like that, then you've got water on it. I take just an old phone book. Now this is simply PVA glue. This is literally Eileen's tacky glue that I have thinned down with just a little bit of water just to make it brushable, easily brushable. I have an old brush here and I'm going to cover the entire back with plenty of glue. This is thinned down Eileen's tacky glue. You don't want any real puddles, but you do want a really good layer of glue down. You can always add more glue later, and you want to go right to the edges, which is why I'm doing this on an old phone book. Plenty of glue. Get your paper nice and wet, and I'm going to try and center my chipboard right in the middle of that so I've got an even margin all the way around. We'll just press that into place. Now you're going to trim your corners. Now this is your big secret here because if you cut to the corner, you're not gonna have anything to cover that corner. So you wanna stay a good quarter of an inch away from your corner when you cut your corners off. A good quarter inch away from your corner when you're cutting your corners off. Do that on all four sides. And then our last corner here, trimming the corner edges away. And then you can fold up your edges. You want them to glue to the sides of the, your chipboard and then fold it on over. Try and keep things nice and tight. Do the same on the other side. 
fold it up along the edge of your chipboard you and also press that down if you like fold that on over if you've got a little bit of glue shy you can always push a little extra glue underneath there those are down good now let's go in tight here and you've got this little extra piece here that you want to fold over your corner just fold that over your corner I use my bone folder because my fingers are too fat. <laughs> Just fold that over the corner. Do that on all four corners. And I'm going to add just a touch more glue to these two flaps just to make sure they get adhered well. Then we'll fold those edges up and over. Fold those edges up and over. And you can also take your little damp and that will help pull any loose glue away and also pull that glue through that paper you can run that over all sides and there you have a perfectly covered piece of cardstock you've got really nice clean corners there no chipboard is showing I will throw this under a couple of books just to keep it nice and flat and firm. You'll be surprised how quickly these dry. These are just the right size for me. And I can take my little accordion fold of watercolor paper and glue those right to the inside. And that'll make my little accordion art journal. <laughs> then of course I die cut the art out of some white cardstock that I colored with some alcohol markers. This is actually from an old Love From Lizzie Oh Baby card kit that had this alpha die. I liked it. It was nice and small, a little artistic. I just glued that to the center of the front of my art journal here. What's fun about an accordion art journal like this is that you also have the back side. There's only four panels on the back, but there are six panels on the front. I'm sure that Sandy Allnock inspired this little art journal from me, but I really like it. I thought it came out so well. You can see we have no chipboard showing anywhere. That's our little art journal. <laughs> now, when Lizzie was doing her unboxing, she mentioned that she had done a cooking slash kitchen kit a number of years ago. She couldn't remember exactly when. I remembered exactly when. It was actually the very first kit that I ever got from Love from Lizzie with a big kitchen theme. And I did an extra project with that kit that was a little cookbook. This is actually the project I did with that kit. This is a piece of vellum from that August 2017 kit. Let's cook something special. This is pattern paper from that kit. We also have this book plate from this kit. I made this little favorite recipe cookbook using pieces and parts from that kit. And maybe this is what gave Lizzie the idea to include some materials to make our own cookbook this month. And this is what we've got. Our recipe book family favorites yummy good food delicious opens up flat and there's all of our recipe cards just waiting for a recipe to be had i also noted my assembly of this how do we cover these if we're not going to cover the edges so i've decided to cover our chipboard with this pattern paper this is one piece of pattern paper cut in half four by six fits perfectly on our chipboard but i don't want that grayish edge on that so i'm going to take a one of my spectrum noir alcohol markers you want to do this with a permanent marker a sharpie or anything will do and i'm just going to draw my marker along the edges of this chipboard and that's going to color the chipboard so that it matches your pattern paper I picked this color. This is a blue turquoise six spectrum noir marker just because I thought it was very close to the blues in this pattern paper. See, you have a nice, nice line there instead of gray. 
it'll be that lovely turquoise color. I would suggest covering the same way that I did for my little art journal and do it the exact same way. Use liquid glue. I'm going to wet down the front of my paper. Get it a little wet. It starts curling up. You know that it's wet. I'll take that same mixture of PVA glue and water. Just thin it down enough so it will spread. And I'm covering up the whole back of this paper. Try and get a nice even layer all over the paper. You don't want any puddles, but you do want everything covered well. Even those corners. Then we'll bring our chipped board over and line it up on our pattern paper. Got some wiggle room because it is wet glue. Try and keep your excess glue mopped up. Make sure you're happy with the edges. Looks like my pattern paper is just the tiniest bit longer than my chipboard but my edges feel really good. I'm going to run my damp rag over it one more time just to pull that glue through that paper. Throw that under a book for a couple of hours. It'll be nice and dry and perfectly flat and perfectly glued to your chipboard. So my chipboard pieces are not quite dry yet, but I do want to line the inside of these also. So I'm going to use that pattern paper that I couldn't use <laughs> because the pattern was going in the wrong direction. This is going in the right direction. We can put these on the back of our cards and make it nice and beautiful. I think I'm going to try this a little bit different. Let's go ahead and wet down our cardstock. I'm wetting down the back side of this. I think I'm going to add the glue to the chipboard instead of to the paper. Our paper's curling up, so that means it's a little wet. Open up our scrap paper. That same thin down PVA glue will cover up the entire back of our cardstock. Make sure you get some on the edges, all the way to the edges. And then we'll pull our paper over to our chipboard and line it up that way. And that helps us get the edges nice and even. A little bit long on one side. That's okay. I can trim that off if need be. You get a little bit more wiggle, I think, with that inside layer. I will take my little damp cloth and run it over it. Now I'll stick this under a book and let it dry completely flat. So to assist in binding my little cookbook together, I made this little template just out of a scrap of cardstock. This is four inches long. This is an inch and a half wide. I scored that at a half an inch and folded it over. And then I marked my little holes where my holes are gonna be. That's at one inch, two, three, four. This is a quarter inch away from the edge. I didn't want to go much further than that because that will start interfering with our individual recipe books. So to mark our cards, I just simply slide the correct end. This is the front. We want it bound on the left. Slide that into my little template, close it down, and then draw my little holes in that space. I am doing two recipe cards at a time. I think you can get away with that with no problem. We'll stack two cards together and then this is a quarter inch punch. Center our drawn hole in there and pop that out. We'll do that for all 10 cards and see how well they line up. So all the holes are punched. Let's see how these babies line up together. Stack them, stack them. Look at that. Those holes go right through, perfectly lined up to go inside our little recipe book. And here's the two covers of my cookbook, all dried nice and flat. Their edges are nice and clean. I did trim off any excess paper that was sticking over the edges. Let's punch some holes in these. Since I've already punched our recipe cards, I'm going to use those for my template. Slide one right on top of our top cover. Give a mark where those holes are and we'll take our eighth inch punch. I think I said this was a quarter inch punch, but this is actually an eighth inch punch. And we're going to punch out those two holes right where we drew them. This should go through this chipboard with no problem. 
There we go. That's one hole. Line it up with our template punch. There's our second hole. Now we're going to reinforce these with some grommets. I happen to have some grommets in my stash. I picked these little dark blue grommets. But these are eighth inch grommets. So I want the pretty blue side on the front. Just pop that in there. Then you have the back part of your grommet. It goes on the back. I think I'm going to do a little, see if I can mash this down just a little bit. Make our chipboard just a little thinner right at that hole. That's good. I've got some good grommet sticking up. Push the holder clip on the back and you just take your little tool put that on top cover your ears give that a whack or two and there's a lovely grommet in the front of our piece we'll do that one more time i'll smash that chipboard down just a little bit right there at the hole slip our grommet in add the sleeve and use our little grommet tool this is a really inexpensive set i think it's a derice set that actually comes with the little tool as well. There's our grommet holes in the front. Let's do the same on the back. Now, if I'm gonna to go to this much trouble to make this, I want this to last a while. So I don't necessarily trust these holes. I wish I had some hole reinforcements to go on top of these. Fortunately, I can make my own hole reinforcements. I'll take my eighth inch punch and punch out a hole. This is some nice thick white cardstock. And then I'll take my quarter inch punch, line that hole up on the inside, punch that, and that gives us a nice little hole reinforcement right there. I've already made a bunch of these. I'm going to go ahead and add little hole reinforcements to each of our recipe cards here. So I decided to do my hole reinforcements on the back side of all my recipe cards. Just a tiny bit of liquid glue around the opening. Add your little hole reinforcement. Line up their center holes. Give them a little press down. It seems fussy, but it really doesn't take very much time. I will take my little pokey tool and make sure my holes are lined up in the center. Give that a good press. My holes are lined up in the center. Give that a good press. I have all 10 of my recipe cards have hole reinforcements on their back sides. So let's put this all together, shall we? We'll take a piece of our teal ribbon and we're gonna cut a nice long angle on one end. We'll feed it through the back of our book. Let's see if we can get that through all of those recipes all at the same time. There it is. Great, we'll go ahead and cut this off. We'll cut this down to match the other side. Then we can thread our ribbons through our top cover, both sides. And I think I'm gonna open this up flat to tie our bows. I want these to be untieable and retieable, so you can adjust your recipes, you can add pages, you can delete pages, and then tie it all back together. A little trim on our tails, still leaving enough that you can retie this bow. Let's see how that closes up then. There's enough room for the pages to turn, enough room for the book to lay flat. I really like this recipe book. You could fill this up with 10 of your favorite recipes and give it as a gift at Christmas time to a loved one or a dear friend, or you could give it blank to somebody, ask them to put their 10 favorite recipes in it and re-gift it back to you when they're done or to anyone. <laughs> I really like the idea of a re-giftable gift. This looks really nice very sharp. I think it will hold up and stand the test of time. So that's my 10 cards and two projects using the Love from Lizzie October 2020 Happiness is Homemade card kit. I really like these cards. I think we have a lot of really truly useful cards here that you could actually send out. I'm really pleased that I was able to use some of the recipe cards as backgrounds. I love this little art journal and of course our little recipe book is charming and would make a great little gift. I do have a good amount of leftover 
leftovers, but not a ton. I actually have only one completely unadulterated piece of pattern paper left. Even that one has a little strip taken out of it. But I was right to be a little sparing with my pattern papers because I almost used those all up. <laughs> I used a good amount of this pattern paper. This is on my inside covers of my recipe book. I have a, a number of tags left. I used a decent amount of the stickers, but I have got gobs and gobs and gobs of stickers left over. Of course, I used all the cardstock in the kit. I used a good amount of those great strawberry glitter peel-offs. My stamp set, I didn't get to every sentiment in this stamp set, but I did use a number of them. I used a little bit of everything in our embellishment bag. All of those extras will find loving homes in my stash. I had a really fun time working with this kit, coming up with these cards and making these two little projects. I hope you enjoy them too. This kit is still available at Love From Lizzie as of posting if I've managed to capture your imagination or spark a thought or two in your mind. Please use my links in the description down below when you do go shopping at Love From Lizzie. You know it is extremely appreciated. Help support this channel and helps keep my head above water. <laughs> Please be safe out there. Be careful. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. Wear your mask. Avoid crowds. We are still far from over with this horrible pandemic that is going on. As always, I thank you so much for spending your time with me here. I hope I was able to give you a grin, maybe a giggle, Please remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your friends. Don't forget to use a hot pad. And as always, I wish you happy crafting. For more detailed information, better pictures, and product links, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.